Buenos días, es un privilegio presentar a Christian Blum, que actualmente trabaja como investigador senior en el Instituto de Inteligencia Artificial, que depende del CSIC y está ubicado en la Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona, en el campus de Bellaterra. Por decir algunas cosas de su currículum, es doctor en Ciencias Aplicadas por la Universidad Libre de Bruselas. Actualmente es editor de Computers and Operations Research, revista que la mayoría de aquí conocemos bastante. Y hace un par de años obtuvo el premio de la CIO y la Fundación BBVA a la mejor contribución metodológica en investigación operativa. Actualmente es, es, tiene más de 200 publicaciones que tienen en total más de 18.000 citas, que en nuestro campo es bastante un número muy considerable. Trabaja, entre otras cosas, en la resolución de problemas difíciles de optimización combinatoria, aplicando técnicas de inteligencia de enjambre, no sé si sería esa la, ¿Sí? la palabra en español, combinando técnicas exactas y técnicas heurísticas. Y bueno, hoy nos va a hablar de mmm, desarrollos recientes en metaurísticas híbridas y también en un esquema algorítmico que ha desarrollado junto a su grupo de investigación que combina técnicas exactas y heurísticas y permite aplicarse de forma sencilla a muchos problemas muy diversos de de investigación operativa y de optimización combinatoria. Y nada, os dejo con él. Ok. Pues eh, voy a empezar en castellano, como hemos hablado eh, toda la mañana en castellano, pero luego para la parte científica voy a cambiar al inglés. ¿vale? Eh, muchas gracias por la invitación. Eh, siempre es un placer cuando eh, como científico te invitan en un sitio y te permiten hablar de tu propio trabajo, ¿no? y, entonces eh, es, un, es un gusto estar aquí y eh, a ver si, si lo que os digo hoy tiene un interés y lo podéis a lo mejor aplicar en vuestro propio trabajo, estaría eh, estupendo. ¿no? Uh, uh, changing to English will be very strange now, I think I will, uh, I will need a few minutes uh, in order to do it well. Um, today, Well, I will explain you um, about a specific algorithm that we developed in our group. Okay, it's called uh, CMSA. Actually, let me change to the next slide. It's called uh, CMSA. Okay, you don't have to read what's, uh, what's written here in this slide. This is just to show you. Ui, this is. Okay, here. This is just to give you an overview of, uh, of the content of this presentation. Okay, so I will basically I will give you applications of this algorithm. Um, I will show you how it works. Uh, actually, it's an algorithm which is very simple conceptually, very simple. Okay, uh, with uh, in many cases it gives you very good results. Okay, so this is one of the main points of this algorithm. I will uh, show you also another tool that we developed in our in our group, which is called search trajectory networks here on the right hand side. Okay. Um, this is a graphical tool that uh, allows you to compare your algorithms in a graphical way, okay, to understand algorithms in a graphical way. And I think it's very, very useful. And then I will give you an outlook at the end. But let's start with a bit of a personal introduction. So as uh, Javier already said, uh, I'm, I'm working in, in an institute in the Artificial Intelligence Research Institute of the CSIC. Um, the CSIC is the largest public institution dedicated to research in Spain, was created in 1939. Uh, it's the third largest in Europe, I think after the Italian CNRS and the French one. Okay. Uh, 6% of all the research staff in Spain work for CSIC and uh, we are responsible for about, uh, about 20% of the scientific production. So there's this gap because we are not giving any classes. Okay, so we can dedicate all our time to research and this has to pay off somehow, okay, in terms of research, in, in terms of production, okay, paper production. Um, Actually, we are, we are quite small institute, so we are 26 uh, um, tenured researchers, um, just 26, and uh, about 50 additional staff members. These are PhD students, postdocs, and so on, okay? Technicians, administration, and we have four lines of research. As we are so small, we are not covering every line in artificial intelligence. We are just covering uh, machine learning, well, which is uh, the most important one, I would say. Uh, multi-agent systems, uh, logic and reasoning, which is uh, one of the oldest lines, let's say, in artificial intelligence, and uh, my line, which is on optimization. So when we think about 
different optimization techniques, um, you know that uh, we can differentiate between exact algorithms and approximate algorithms. Okay, this is the most uh, general division you can make. Um, as you, most of you, I think, are from the operations research field, uh, so we don't have to talk a, a lot about this slide. Uh, on, the, on the exact side, we have uh, techniques like dynamic programming and so on, branch and bound, all the ILP techniques. And uh, on the right-hand side, where we especially work on, you have approximate techniques, right? Like uh, greedy heuristics, these are the most simple ones, you, know all that, you all know that. And we have meta-heuristics, okay? And personally, I'm coming from the and colony optimization area here, okay? Uh, so I started my research career in ant colony optimization in, in Brussels. So I was the first PhD student of the person who invented ant colony optimization. And, uh, and later I was, uh, uh, well, uh, getting broader and also working on evolutionary algorithms and uh, taboo search and so on, okay? So, our work, if you want to have a characterization, the work of my group is basically algorithm oriented. So we are not tied to a specific problem, to a specific family of problems. We want to um, develop general algorithms that you can apply basically to any problem. Okay? And um, mostly we are working in, two, in these two areas here, okay? in, in swarm intelligence. So either we are working on uncolony algorithms or particle swarm algorithms and so on, or we are working on uh, hybrid meta heuristics, okay, which are combinations of meta heuristics, this can be from the swarm intelligence field, but don't have to be, with, uh, especially with exact techniques, ILP techniques from the operations research field, okay. And today I, I want to show you an algorithm that is from, uh, from this field here, okay, from the hybrid meta heuristics field. So what's the reason of being hybrid meta heuristics? Um, in a simplistic way, you could say, if you look at a specific problem and you, you grow the problem instance size or difficulty, then your exact techniques that you have, they, uh, with growing problem size, they start to fail at some point. And usually you have, in most problems, you have kind of a phase transition, when, it's, when they start to fail, then it's pretty quickly they don't give you anything useful anymore if you even grow further the problem instance size. Okay? This often happens. And then you have to go to, towards approximate techniques, but what do you do in the case of really large problems? And there it has shown that hybrid algorithms, they can exploit very well the synergies between two types of techniques, exact ones and approximate ones. Because even meta heuristics, they can be lost in, uh, in large search spaces uh, spanned, let's say, by really large problem instances. Okay, so this is, this is at least our, ex our experience. So talking about hybrid meta heuristics, when you go to Google Scholar, for example, and you type this term, you look for this term, hybrid meta heuristic, uh, then you find that the number of publications is, was growing. It started in the early 90s of the last uh, century, so something like 30 years ago, and then uh, the number of publications was basically growing. Um, but nowadays, actually, there are many, many more, uh, many, many more papers on hybrid meta heuristics, just that they don't use the term hybrid meta heuristic. Okay? Actually, nowadays, many people work on hybrids uh, without mention, uh, mentioning this explicitly anymore, because um, there's no need to. Okay? So one uh, large field of hybrid algorithms, they are based on uh, problem instance reduction. Okay, so this is not something new. Many algorithms are, are based on that. Also, our CMSA algorithm is based on the idea, on the basic idea of problem instance reduction. Okay, so when you have an exact technique, at some point, uh, when, you, when the problem instance size grows, it starts to fail, but you could still make a uh, beneficial use of your, of your of CPLEX, of an, or of Kurobi, of an ILP solver. Uh, for solving sub-instances of your original problem instance, okay? So this is the main idea, and you, this is exploited in algorithms like uh, large neighborhood search, okay? I'm sure most of you have heard about large neighborhood search algorithms, decomposition techniques, uh, generate and solve frameworks, and so on. Or also set covering based approaches, later we will see an example for that. So this is something in operations research, many 
problems like bin packing problems, uh, routing problems, they can be expressed in different kinds of ways as an ILP, in a standard assignment type uh, way or in set covering based uh, models and then uh, you can find clever ways to exploit the set covering models, okay, reducing the set covering models, so this is another um, example. Or um, if you come more from the meta heuristics area, there are things like solution merging. Okay? So there are some evolutionary algorithms where people just take some solutions, build a sub-instance and solve that. Okay? Then inject somehow this, the resulting solution again into pop, uh, populations. Okay? And they, usually they call that uh, solution merging or optimal recombination. Okay? Okay. Javier has already mentioned that at the beginning. This is probably our most important uh, award that we got uh, for our work. And this is, was especially for the CMSA, uh, for the development of CMSA. And you, there, over there you see the whole team that was involved in this initial paper. Okay, don't know, some of you might know Jose Antonio Lozano from uh, San Sebastian. Uh, Manuel Lopez Ibanez y Pedro, who is here in the, in the room. Uh, and this was the initial team, let's say, for the initial uh, development of CMSA. Okay, so what's the main idea of this algorithm? The main idea is, or our observation was, that in the presence of a large number of solution components, and when I say solution components, you can think about, if you think in, in ILP terms, you can think about combinations of variables and values, okay? You can uh, regard every combination of a variable with one of its values as a solution component. Or if you think more in the, from the meta heuristics direction, you can see when you swap on to solve the TSP, for example, all the edges in the TSP graph are solution components. Okay? But there's always a connection. So in the presence of a large number of solution components, many of them, if you include them in a solution, only can lead to bad solutions. Okay? So the idea was to exclude presumably bad solution components before applying an ILP solver, for example. Okay? So these are the steps then uh, of, an algorithm that we, of this algorithm that we designed. Okay? First, iteratively, we would generate presumably good solutions in a probabilistic way, for example, with a probabilistic greedy heuristic. Okay? And then we assemble a sub-instance from the solution components that we find in these solutions that we generated in a probabilistic way. Okay? The next step consists in solving the sub-instance by means of an available solver. I always leave that general, okay? but we are also always working with ILP solvers, okay? with problems where we can express sub-instances uh, in, in terms of an ILP model. And then we delete seemingly useless components from the sub-instance. Okay? So when, when the solver gives you a good solution, not necessarily maybe the optimal, but a good solution to the sub-instance, then you can say all the other solution components from the sub-instance that are not in this best solution to the sub-instance, they are somehow useless. Okay? So you would remove some of these and add new ones in the next iteration. Okay? So this sub-instance is something adaptive. Okay, so this adapts over the course of the algorithm. And this is then the, the algorithm as such. Okay, so this C is always... Uh, <laughs> this C is always the complete set of items or solution components. Items is for me the same as solution components. Okay, and the sub-instance is always a subset of this complete set of solution components. And then we have something which we call the age, okay? the age of the solution components. Each solution component has an age, and initially this age is set to zero. Okay? And then we would iterate in this algorithm these four steps, okay? one, two, three, four, at each duration of the algorithm. First, we probabilistically generate a number of NA solutions, okay? so these are the parameters of this algorithm. And this gives us the set uh, C hat, which is a set of items or solution components used in these solutions. Okay? Then the next step consists in simply adding this new set of solution components to my sub-instance, which is initially empty. Okay? And we would solve the sub-instance with, uh, with a solver, which might be an ILP solver. Okay? The next step consists in um, 
incrementing the age of all solution components in the sub-instance, okay, and setting the age of all components in the best solution to the sub-instance to zero. Okay, so I have my sub-instance, there's a set of solution components, and the solver gave me a solution. Okay, now I increment the age of all the components in the sub-instance, but the ones that are in the best solution, they get their age set back to zero. Okay, so this means somehow they are useful, keep them. Okay, and the others, well, they are moving towards elimination. Okay, because the fourth step here, what we, what we do in the fourth step is removing from the sub-instance all components that had, have reached a maximum age. So this means if a solution component C in the sub-instance has not formed part of the best solution to the sub-instance in the last age max iterations of the algorithm, it's eliminated. Okay? And this is the, this is the basic idea. Okay, it's very simple, also very simple to program in many cases, because all you need is a grid heuristic, you use, which you use in a probabilistic way, okay, and a way of solving sub-instances with an ILP solver, for example. Okay. Okay, let's see some applications, some uh, easy to explain uh, applications. And the first one is uh, for the minimum dominating set problem, which is one of the classical problems no? in, in computer science, for example. So just to explain it quickly, um, in this problem we have given a, a graph, okay? a gra an undirected graph G, and the search space consists of all subsets of nodes of this graph, such that, I, I put this into words, such that for each node in the graph, either the node itself or at least one of its neighbors forms part of the solution. Okay? So this here is the, uh, this is the closed neighbor of a, of, of a node which con contains all the neighbors and the node itself. Okay? So when I uh, make the intersection of that with my solution, it, it, it cannot be empty okay, for a valid solution. And we are looking for a dominating set that is as small as possible. Okay? So we, we want to minimize. So here are a few examples. Um, we have a graph, okay, and the, the nodes in red, they form part of the solution. And you can see that for each node, either the node itself or at least one of its neighbors forms part of the solution. Okay, so they are all valid solutions. Just that uh, these two solutions here on the right, they have just two nodes, so they are better than this one here, we are minimizing, and actually these, these two are here are optimal solutions. Okay? So we want to solve this problem with CMSA. And what we need is uh, an ILP model, okay, where we can model sub-instances, and uh, a greedy heuristic. Okay? So what we need to do also is defining the set of solution components. This is an important step in each CMSA algorithm. Okay? And let's see how we can do that in this, in this, in this case. Actually, we are looking at two different variants. Okay, of a CMSA algorithm, which differ in the way the solution components are defined. So in the first variant here, uh, for each vertex of the graph, we introduce a solution component CI. Okay, this is the easiest way of defining the set of, of solution components, the most natural one, uh, if you want. And in the second variant, um, we do uh, the the, we use the definition that we use if we have, don't have any other idea, let's say. Okay? So in the second variant, we have for each variable of the ILP model, xi, um, we have two solution components. One which is the combination of the variable with value 0, and the other one the combination of xi of each variable with value 1. Okay, because it's a binary problem, so all the variables have uh, a domain 0 and 1, and we do this definition for the solution components. Okay? The greedy heuristic is very simple in this case, so this is an iterative process for the construction of a solution that adds one vertex at each construction step, and uh, if we use that in a deterministic way, we always choose the vertex that covers more uncovered vertices. Okay? But we can use that in a probabilistic way, and that's what we do within CMSA for generating different solutions. Okay? But with a bias towards good solutions. Okay? 
So let's see how this, uh, how this then works. Let's say uh, we are constructing um, these two solutions here per iteration. Okay? So in the first variant where components correspond to vertices, okay, in, the in the first solution we find two solution components. Okay? The ones corresponding to the third node and the fourth node. Right? So this is why they are painted in green here. The second solution uh, consists of vertices V2 and V4. So in the second solution we have components C2 and C4. Okay? So for, for solving or for defining a, a sub-instance what we simply do is we are setting all variables to zero whose solution components, whose nodes have never appeared in any solution. Okay, so C1, uh, V1, V5, and V6 they have not appeared in any solution. So we basically we set their value to zero. We don't allow these nodes to be included in solutions of the subinstance. Okay, very simple. So the next, uh, this is the same, but for the second variant. Okay, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> for the second uh, variant of CMSA. Okay, we have the same two solutions, and now let's have a look at the solution components that these solutions include. Okay, so here we have now for each node or, 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 uh, or variable, if you want, we have two solution components. Okay, so these two components they refer to the first node into value 0 and value 1. Okay? So if you look at the first uh, solution up there, we see V1 doesn't form part of the solution. So that's why we are adding C10 to the solution, the component C10. Because this refers to variable, variable x1 having value 0. Okay? So for the second uh, node, it's the same. Okay, the second node is not does not form part of the solution. That's why we are adding C two zero to the solution. Now, in the third, in the case of the third node, this is different. Okay, the third node forms part of the solution. That's why we are adding C three one to the solution. Okay. So for every node, we have two solution components, and depending on if it's in the solution or not, we are adding one component or the other. Okay. Now let's see how we define, on the basis of that, how we define the ILP model okay, for the sub-instance. Here we could do it like this. So, in the case of V1, for example, we only have components C1, 0 in our sub-instance. So this means this has to be fixed to 0. Like in the other case. Okay? The same for nodes V5 and V6. You see that the sub-instance only has components C5, 0. Okay, so we are fixing that to zero. The difference to the first variant is, is, is the thing on the right hand side here. So for, for node V4, we see that we only have component C41. Okay, so it formed always part of the solutions. So that's why we are fixing this variable to one. Okay, so we are forcing the solver to include this node into the solution of to any, to any valid solution to the sub-instance. Okay? So the difference is to the first variant that if, we, if I define the solution components in this way, uh, the ILP model is more, the, of the sub-instance is more restricted. It okay? has a smaller search space. This is, this is the difference. Okay? Now let's have a look at results. Okay? So I've made a a small experimental evaluation on uh, random graphs um, with 500,000, 1,500, 2,000 nodes, okay, with different densities, and uh, we applied four different algorithms, okay. So CMSA is the CMSA vari the first variant of CMSA, okay. CMSA restricted is the second variant that I just explained, so the more restrictive one, and then. Cplex, okay, so the, the standalone application of Cplex to the to the problems, and the greedy heuristic in a deterministic way. Okay, so we did parameter tuning with iRays, which is a different tuning tool for getting good parameter values. Okay, and uh, and well, just to go through this here, there are some, of course, there are some parameters that are intrinsic to the CMSA algorithm, and uh, some others 
where we can change the behavior of CPLEX for solving the sub-instances. You know that CPLEX, for example, I'm all, I say CPLEX because we are only, only working with CPLEX, but uh, if you know, uh, if you are working with CPLEX, you know that there are hundreds of parameters actually that you could change. Okay, but we are only looking at three different ones, I think. The use of warm start or not, whether we use heuristic emphasis for the, for the optimization, or uh, if we abort a run, an application to a sub-instance, once we improve the best known solution so far in our algorithm run. Okay, because this, this can sometimes save computation time. Okay. And the CMSA parameters are these ones. So the number of solutions uh, that you construct by iteration, the degree of randomness that you use for constructing solutions, the maximum age, this is an important parameter of the solution components. Uh, these are the three parameters okay, of CMSA. So now here you see three graphics. Okay? Um, these are for results for 500 node graphs. And uh, when you go from left to right, uh, these are for an increasing density, graphs of increasing density. Okay? So if you want, at the, at the left hand side we have the sparsest graphs here and here we have results for the, for the densest graphs. And we see the results over, I think uh, we used 30 different uh, problem instances here um, for, for each of these uh, three graphics. Okay? And we are minimizing. So you see that uh, you, you see what, we, what you want to see actually from a, from a hybrid algorithm. Okay, you see that the two CMSA variants and CPLEX are clearly better than the greedy heuristic. Okay, and moreover, the CMSA variants they are basically uh, performing at the same level as CPLEX. Here, CPLEX is very strong. Okay, CPLEX gives you the optimal solution in no time, basically. And this means that our CMSA variants their work. Apart from this case here, where CMSA for one or two instances doesn't quite reach the optimal solution, but we are working at the same level okay, for small problem instances. Now when we go to large ones, okay, these are now results for 2000 node graphs, um, you see also what, what's usually happening, okay, that CPLEX uh, at some point basically falls behind. Okay, so this is where we reach this phase transition, especially for the dense graphs where CPLEX is even worse than, uh, than the greedy heuristic in the given time. Okay? And we can see that uh, the two CMSA variants, they are in all cases now, they are basically outperforming the other two techniques. And in this case, the CMSA variant number one, the intuitive one, is a little bit better than the other one. Okay? But this depends very much on the problem. Sometimes it's the other way around. Okay? But this is basically what we want to see. Okay? For small instances, CMSA performs like CPLEX, and for large one, it's much better than CPLEX. Okay? Okay, let's, uh, is there any question about this first part? No? Is, is the idea clear? This is, this is important for me that uh, you got the idea? Okay. Then let's have a look at um, a second example. Okay, so here we, are, we look at the problem that we can uh, express in two ways as an ILP, in an assignment type way and in a set covering way. Okay? And I show you that usually the set covering formulation is much better for, for the use of C C CMSA. Okay? So this is something very, very much known in, in operations research, right? Many people are working on these set covering uh, based formulations and heuristics and also exact techniques uh, because, uh, for example, column generation techniques are often based on, on set covering based uh, formulations, <coughs> if they are possible. Okay? But here I have two examples of papers on, on, heuristic, on heuristic ways of uh, exploiting the set covering formulation of a problem. Okay? Now the problem I want to look at is called a uh, variable sized bin packing problem. So in this problem we have a number of items to be packed into bins. Okay, here we have uh, an example of uh, uh, three items. So the size of these items they show uh, basically the, the weight of these items. Okay. And then we have different bin types here on, on the right. Okay, every bin type has a cost, okay, so these C values are the costs, 
and these uh, W values are the capacities of these bin types. And we have to choose bins of certain types and pack all the items such that the costs of the bin types that we used, of the bins, okay, um, is minimized. Okay, so for example, we have two uh, solutions down there. Here we have used a bin of the second type. Okay, we have put the third item into it and we have used a bin of the largest type here uh, and have put the other two items into it. Okay? And the cost of that is 4 because the cost of, uh, of a bin of type 2 is, is 4 plus 5 because uh, this uh, largest bin has a cost of 5. Okay? So the objective function value of the solution is 4 plus 5 is 9. Now on the other side we have an alternative solution which is I think the optimal one in this case. Uh, we open a bin of type 1 and put the first item into it okay, and put the other two items in a bin of type 3. Okay? And uh, the cost is 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay? So this is the problem. We are minimizing again. Now this is the standard uh, ILP mo assignment type ILP model uh, for this problem. Okay, here we have a, a binary variable xij um, and if this is set to 1 this means uh, item i is assigned to bin j. And of course we also have to assign types to bins, okay, to open bins. And this is done with variables y. Okay, so y j k is set to 1 means that bin number j is assigned to bin type k. Okay, and then we have, oh, oops. we have of course the standard uh, constraints here, okay, so these constraints mean that every item must be assigned exactly to one bin. Uh, the second uh, set of constraints means that all the open bins must have a type, one type at most, and, uh, and here these are the capacity constraints, okay, so all the items that we put into a bin um, must fit into this bin. Okay, but this we, this problem we can easily reformulate as a as a set covering uh, ILP. Okay, so here uh, B is the set of all possible bins. This means uh, a bin of a certain type with items in 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 it. Okay, this is what I call a bin. The weight of a bin is the sum of the weights of its items. Okay. And then we assign also a cost to the bin which corresponds to the lowest cost bin type such that all the items of this bin fit into this bin type. Okay? And we use of course the lowest cost one. This is the cost of the bin. And then we define also this subset of bins, bi is the set of all bins that contain a certain item i. Okay? And then the, the, the ILP model is very simple. Okay? So we are summing over all these are binary variables okay so for each bin in b we have a binary variable which means do we take it or not and uh, we have a cost of the bin so we are summing over these costs here and we say that every item must be at least in one of the chosen bins okay in principle we should, we should say equal to one here but this uh, formulation is numerically uh, not stable and C -plex, uh, is, for cplex is much more difficult to solve equal to 1. Okay? That's why we are solving greater than equal to 1 and then we are looking if there are items that are in, in several bins and we are remo we're removing them from there. Okay? okay, so this is the set covering uh, formulation. And now let's compare a bit these two models that we have uh, for their use in CMSA. Okay, so what we did here is we have a problem instance, in this case a problem instance with uh, 100 items, okay, and what we did is we are probabilistically generating two solutions here for the left hand side graphic and 50 solutions for this graphic here. We are building the sub instance, okay, the corresponding sub instance with all the solution components that we find in these solutions. And uh, we, are, we are solving it with CPLEX in the standard assignment type way and in the set covering way. Okay? And in these uh, radar charts you see four uh, different measures. Okay? So the improvement over the best one of these solutions that went into the sub-instance, the number of variables of the sub-instance model, 
the relative MIP gap okay, and the computation time needed to solve the model. And what we, what we would like to see, of course, is something like uh, the black uh, thing here on the right hand side. So that time is low, MIP gap is low, number of variables is low and the improvement is high. <laughs> okay? This is a good model for CMSA, for solving sub-instances. And we see that this is actually what happens for the set covering based model. This is the black line. The assignment type model is the other ones. So there we have more variables, it takes more time, okay, and the improvement is not so high. Okay? And if we look at the same for a bigger problem instance, so this is a problem instance with 2000 items. Okay? This is even more pronounced. Okay? So here you can see that the MIP gap here of the, of the standard model is very large still. It uses all the given time, so the time limit was 20 seconds here. Many variables, okay, and the improvement is basically zero. <laughs> okay? So this is an indication, use the set covering based model uh, inside your CMSA algorithm. Okay? And that's what we did. Okay? So we, uh, we implemented both types of CMSA algorithms. And uh, so I call them here CMSA standard. This is using the assignment type uh, model for solving sub-instances. And we are using the set covering based CMSA. Okay? These are the, the, the state of the art papers. Uh, you see that in the last 10 years there were no improvements in this problem. Okay? Um, so these are, this is a VNS. This is a paper of, of us actually. And this uh, is a GA. Heuristics plus a GA you find in this paper. So we, we applied these two variants to the 150 problem instances that you find in these two papers and uh, these are the results we get. And I showed you the results in terms of critical difference plots. I don't know if you know these plots. Critical difference plots. In these plots on the, on the x-axis here you have the average ranking of an algorithm for a set of problem instances. Okay? So the, lo the lower the number, the average ranking, the better. And algorithm whiskers here, so here for example, are joined by a, a bold bar if these two algorithms are not statistically, uh, uh, if the difference if between these two algorithms is not statistically significant. Okay? So this is doing statistical tests. And we see that, well, if I look at all instances together, I see that the set covering based CMSA is uh, statistically significant better than all the other algorithms. And actually the, the standard CMSA based on the assignment type model is the worst. Okay? It's worse than the state of the art algorithms. And we can see also B1 and uh, B2 and B3 are different classes of instances. We don't have to go into this, what, what, what are the differences between these two classes. But we can see that apart from the last case here, where our uh, best CMSA variant is not statistically significant better than the VNS, we see there is always better. Okay? Actually, um, we found 68 Mm, new best known solutions for this set, okay? which is, I think, quite good for a problem where nothing was moving within 10 years. Okay? And the, the good thing is that an algorithm like this you have implemented basically in, a, in, in half a day. <laughs> because you just need a way of constructing solutions and the way of defining the sub-instance and, uh, and solving it. Okay? So this is for me also the advantage against uh, column generation approaches, for example, especially if you think about people in industry, which might not have the knowledge uh, to, to, to implement a column generation algorithm. So something like this is much more accessible to them, okay, an algorithm like this. Okay, how much time do I have left? 15 minutes. 15? Only? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what are the differences? This is also interesting to see. What are the differences between this CMSA algorithm and large neighborhood search, which is probably the best known hybrid technique? Okay. Um, well, this is the, the general framework of a solution destruction based large neighborhood search, which is often applied. Okay, so you generate an initial solution 
And then in each um, iteration, you first partially destroy the solution. Uh, you apply a solver that, uh, that um, in order to get the best solution that contains this partial solution that you have uh, obtained by partially destroying the solution. And then you have two solutions and you choose between one of them to be the current solution for the next iteration. Okay? So this is a very standard uh, LNS. Um, this is a general paper here on, on uh, LNS. And uh, in this paper you find the material that I, that I present now. Okay, so the, deep, the main difference between the two techniques is uh, how sub-instances are, to the original problem instances, are obtained. Okay, so in, in LNS, you have a partial solution and you tell the solver, give me the best solution that contains this partial solution. And in CMSA, you build this sub-instance by generating probabilistically solution and joining the solution components. And tell the solver, give me the best solution that only contains solution components from the sub-instance. Okay, this, this is the main difference. So our intuition was always that uh, CMSA should be better than LNS when solutions contain few components. What, I'm, what, what, what do I mean by that? Imag imagine um, an, a knapsack problem, for example. Okay? You can have knapsack problems where the, the capacity of the knapsack is very high, so you can put many, many items into the knapsack. So in these cases, um, solutions would contain many solution components, or your, your capacity could be very low and only few items fit into, fit into the knapsack. Okay? So in these cases, our intuition was that CMSA would be better than, than LNS. Okay? So we did some tests in the context of the multidimensional knapsack problem. Okay? So here we don't just have one resource and one capacity of the knapsack, we have several resources and for each resource type the knapsack has a capacity limit, okay, a capacity. So we have a set of items, we want to choose a subset of these items such that they fit according to all um, resources into the knapsack. Okay? And this is, this is expressed by, by this model here, okay? the, the, the standard model for the, for the MDKP. So, um, the application of CPLEX within LNS, LNS and CMSA is the usual one. Okay, so in LNS we have a partial solution and we fix all variables for the items that are in this partial solution. Okay, they must form part of a solution. And in CMSA we replace simply uh, C here, the set of items, by C prime, which is our sub-instance. Okay? which are the items that we can choose in our sub-instance. This is the difference. And then we generated different types of problem instances with different tightness. Okay? So there's a way in the literature um, uh, for generating instances with this per, uh, alpha parameter. Okay? So these alpha parameters have values between 0 and 1. This is an instance generator. And uh, when alpha is close to 0, it will generate instances with a low capacities. Okay? So solutions will contain few items. And on the other side, when this alpha is close to one, capacities are very high of all the resources and many items fit into the knapsack. Okay? And we generated, over the whole range, we generated uh, problem instances. Okay? Let's see what uh, happens. So these are, these are results for small problem instances. Okay? So on the x-axis of these graphics, we have uh, a growing tightness. Okay? So the results here are for very tight problem instances where only few items fit into the knapsacks. And the more we go to the right, we, we have instances with high capacities. Okay? And you see here in these bar, in this, uh, box plots the improvement of CMSA over LNS. So if this is zero, basically they are working in the same way. Okay, and this is what happens for small problem instances. Okay? Sometimes one is better, CMSA is better, and sometimes LNS is better, so on average basically they work on this in the same way. Okay? So when we saw that we were a, bit, a little bit disappointed. Okay? But then we went to bigger problem instances. So this is for larger problem instances with uh, 5,000 items here on the left and 10,000 items on the right. And you see here that 
the boxes are in the positive area, this means Siemens A works better than LNS in these cases. And this, this is a confirmation of our intuition. Okay? So here really CMS A, when solutions are small and instances are large, works better than LNS. Okay? Um, which is somehow very intuitive because if you think of a small um, uh, solution okay, in, in, a, in, a, in a large problem instance and you have an LNS that partially destroys the solution, if you only have a few items in there, you can only take away a few items and you, your jump that you are doing is very, is very local. Okay? While in CMSA you can do wider jumps because your, your construction heuristic potentially generate solutions from very different areas of the search space and then you are merging that. Okay? So you can do larger jumps from one iteration to the other in CMSA and this is the intuitive explanation of that. Okay? And I think the last, uh, the last um, aspect that I will uh, explain is this one. Um, this is also for me is a, is a very useful tool that uh, initially came out of a collaboration with uh, uh, Gabriela Ochoa, who is at the University of Stirling in the UK, and uh, Catherine Malen, uh, who is in, uh, in the University of South Africa. And uh, we, we developed a tool um, that would graphically show how algorithms move through the search space. Okay? And then, so we, 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 apply, we, uh, we give our scripts here in this, in this GitHub um, repository for generating these graphics. Okay? But this is, very, this is a bit uh, cumbersome to, to be used. So one of my PhD students, current PhD students, uh, developed a uh, web application, okay, which you can, well, you don't see the, <laughs> the um, URL here below, but you can, every, it's, it's for free, okay? so everyone can use it uh, in, a, in terms of a web application, okay? and this, which is much, much easier to be used. But let's see what this STN tool is. So this STN tool produces graphics like this one. Okay, so in this case, we have two different algorithms. You see that by two different colors uh, in the arcs. Okay, we have the algorithm that produces these green trajectories here, and we have an algorithm that produces the blue trajectories. <laughs> And we see that these arcs have a direction. Okay, so these are, this is the trajectory of the algorithm. So an algorithm starts in a yellow square. This is the initial solution, and then moves to another solution, and so on, until it stops somewhere. Okay, the red one is always the best solution that you see in a graphic like this. The size of a node shows how many algorithms ended up there. So the more algorithms end up in a node, the bigger the node is, and. Uh, the black triangles or dark grey triangles, these are also stopping points of algorithm trajectories, but they are not the best solution in the, in the comparison. Okay? So we see here that, for example, the green algorithm, which is an, which is an, an LNS algorithm, okay, starts always from, the, from a greedily constructed solution. Okay? There are three trajectories, and uh, actually two of them end up here, and one of them ends here in this best solution. Okay? And then we have this CMSA algorithm that starts from different solutions because uh, at each iteration we probabilistically construct solutions, so we never start from the same solution when we, when we do different runs. And uh, we see that in this case all of them end up here. Okay? But this is just an example. So, but these graphics, they tell you things about your algorithm. Okay? So in this case, uh, it's just an example. Okay? So it's constructed. The CMSA would have shorter trajectories. Okay? The LNS has, has larger ones. Okay? We see that there are places where even uh, different algorithms coincide. This, these are kind of uh, attractors in the search space. Okay? So there are many types of information that you can get out of these graphics. So for example, uh, out of this one. Okay, so this is an MDKP instance. Also, this is a, these are real experiments between LNS, LNS and CMSA. And uh, we have 10 runs of each algorithm. This is for a specific problem instance. Okay, with a low tightness. Okay, so there we expect uh, CMSA to be better. And this graphic tells us why. <laughs> okay, what we can see, for example, is the CMSA runs, okay, 
they are all attracted by basically the same area in the search space. So there is an attractor. Even though they start in different places, they move basically the same area. This is a good sign for an algorithm, for a meta heuristic, when there is an attractor in the search space and, and it moves there. Well, if you find good solutions there. Okay. And you see that the best solution was found just once, okay, but uh, besides one of these large attractors where, where many of these runs stopped actually. Okay. On the other side, uh, there's no overlap between the 10 trajectories of the, of the LNS with the trajectories of CMSA. No overlap. Okay. Moreover, there's no overlap between the 10 uh, LNS trajectories. Okay. So each one of these trajectories goes somewhere else in the search space. This is another good sign for an algorithm, okay. for meta heuristic at least. So this also explains you if you only would see this graphic and you wouldn't say the see the numerical results, you would immediately know the blue one is better than the green one. Okay. And then for an algorithm designer, so if we are in the design stage, we can still change things in the LNS, for example. Okay? We, can, we know what's going wrong, so let's see what we can add, which algorithmic component, in order to make it work better. Okay? So let's jump over, over that, um, because I don't have much time left. Let's just go to the end, uh, just to, to, for you to see a little bit of the current applications that we have of CMSA. So these are our own applications, okay, so we, we also, this is the, the topic that I was jumping over, this is the ADAPT CMSA variant, so because sometimes what we noticed is that when you have an instance set which is very heterogeneous, you have very small problem instances, very large ones, or of different type, okay, you need specific tuning for different subsets. Okay? And in order to avoid that, we developed actually this ADAPT CMSA algorithm, okay, which doesn't need too much tuning. You tune it once for the whole instance set, and then basically it works well for all the subsets of instances. Okay? And we have applied the standard variant and the, um, and the adapt variant to different problems. Okay? You can see here the list. And uh, the nice thing is that also other researchers are starting to, to use CMSA. I know that uh, Rafa Mati uh, from Valencia, they have a paper submitted on CMSA uh, and, the, and then there are others. Okay? So the, these are, uh, these are colleagues from, from Malaga. Uh, I don't know if you know Francisco Chicano. This is one, Ferrer this is one of, one of his PhD students. And they were working on test data generation in, in software product lines and used CMSA. Okay? There was also a, a PhD student that used a lot uh, CMSA in, in the doctoral thesis and so on. Uh, so I hope things are picking up and uh, people are using it. I always try to, to convince people that they, at least they try for one of their problems and see how, how it works. Okay? Because it's, if you have the components, if you have already some greedy heuristic and you have an LP model, it's, it's easy to, to test, let's say. No? So just a short outlook um, on, on to tell you on what topics in CMSA we are currently working on. Um, we are not only working on CMSA, this is just our CMSA topics. Okay? So one thing is uh, introducing learning into CMSA because one thing is that um, the probability distribution over the search space, which we are using to generate probabilistically solutions at each generation, doesn't change usually. It's always the same probability distribution. So here we could, so there might be a component that is easily entered into a solution, but is always kicked out by the solver after h max iterations because it never appears to the best in the best solution to the sub instance. Okay, so somehow we have to find a way to change this probability distribution. For example, not to include this item anymore. Okay, so but this must be adaptive. So um, people are working on that in my group. Then uh, to replace the or bias the greedy information for solution construction with information learned by means of machine learning techniques. Okay, so nowadays you know there's this hype of uh, combining machine learning techniques or using machine learning techniques within optimization algorithms. And we could try, I mean there are problems where you don't have a good greedy information. 
You don't have a good greedy function. So we might try to learn it with machine learning techniques and then use it within CMSA. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is uh, Camilo's work, for example. Or uh, using state-of-the-art solvers within CMSA. So not necessarily CPLEX to uh, apl apply to an ILP model, but we are, for example, we are doing experiments with MAXAT where we use MAXAT solvers, very well-known MAXAT solvers, for, for solving sub-instances. And we are getting very good results. Okay, so this is published and uh, we could improve the performance of very well-known MAXAT solvers by plugging them into CMSA. <laughs> okay. okay, and that's, uh, that's it from my side. Um, I hope you find something in, found something interesting and if you have any questions. Um, I have all the time in the world, today at least. Questions? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I have some comments or questions. We will work this afternoon, so I can ask you a lot of questions. I have, I have a comment about the parameters of CMSA. You said that there are only three parameters. In the, in the basic version. In the basic. Mm -hmm. And you use iRace to, to tune the parameters. And the performance of CMSA is very is highly dependent on the, the value of the parameters. Have you studied if there, there are a lot of differences of the yeah. performance when yeah. you change the, the values? Yeah. So this was one of the reasons. So for some problems, you have very homogeneous instance sets. And then, uh, and then the dependence on the parameters is not very high. So you can tune it once and it will work well. Mm -hmm. But then you have other problems where you have very heterogeneous instance sets and you would tu have to tune specifically for sub for subsets of instances. And in order to avoid that, we have developed this ADAPT CMSA algorithm. So there you don't need so much tuning anymore. But you are right, especially the problem instance, the sub-instance size, so it's very important in the CMSA. So, because all, also in, the, in terms of sub-instances, you can get to this phase transition. So when the sub-instance is bigger than a certain limit, basically your algorithm wouldn't work anymore. Because it, it cannot even solve the sub-instance within the short time, given at each iteration. Okay? So um, it's dependent on problem, uh, on parameter values, yeah. Another question is um, about the application of the CMSA. It seems very, very easy, but uh, if I think in the problems we are working on, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to build the components. I think it's the most difficult task mm -hmm. for applying the CMSA. I've seen that you work with some scaling problems. Uh, but right there. Yeah. So I think we will, we will we will apply, we, we will, um, and uh, another question is about the tool, mm -hmm. STN. Mm -hmm. uh, is it only useful for sequential al algorithms or can it be used for population-based algorithms? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, whenever you have an iterative algorithm that works in iter iterations, you just have to lock the data. Okay, so for example, if you have a population-based algorithm, you could define, you could decide what you lock at each iteration. You could choose simply the, the best solution at each iteration for, for generating these trajectories. Or you could, um, you could have a random solution from the population uh, for each uh, iteration. Okay, so there, if, if you have several solutions at each iteration, you have to decide which one you take for the logging and which one gives you the best, um, the, the most um, clear results, let's say, when you look at it then as an S STN. Usually you would use the best solution per iteration uh, for logging data. Okay. But you need an iterative algorithm. Algorithms that just work and then give you one solution Mm. It doesn't make sense to apply it as an STN tool. No, it's really a thought for meta heuristic type algorithms. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? No questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you.